Hare Krishna, this is Krishnendudas coming from Egypt. I'm trying to blend in with the local people by wearing the local people's Egyptian type of clothes here in the desert. Yes. Now, let me see if I can transport myself somewhere else. Hmm, let me see. Ah, uh, yeah, where are we here? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, bro, we're back in New Zealand now, eh? You know, I'm trying to be like, you know, with the Maori culture and that. That's why I've got this, uh, what do you call it, moku on my face. It's all about, you know, preaching and uh, it's all about the external features. We don't want to put people off. We want to attract them, you see. All right, one second. Okay. Here I am. This time I'm undercover. No one will know who I am, right? I can just... Slip in, slip out. Cloak and dagger style preaching. But wait a minute. What if we want to preach to Indians? Here we go. I got the perfect thing. Let me transport myself. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Check out the music. Oh, yes. Even got Tilak. Look. Oh, yes, my friends. There are so many uniforms and so many kinds of music. Now it's back to me. The original. Well, in this life anyway, they know me as Krishnendras, man of many faces. Okay, I just came back from a run. Excuse me for playing around with all of these uh, fancy features on uh, on YouTube, uh, Facebook Live. It's kind of fun. Let me just oh, let me just do one more, just for the fun. Let me see. Some really freaky ones, which I might... Oh, yeah, it's getting towards... Oh, how about this one? Here we go. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Okay, 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 enough. I'm sorry for these distracting things. And I think that these external things like our dress is a distraction. It's not really the main thing. You know, some people have been trying to make out that the secret to making more Western devotees is that you just have to dress like Westerners. Okay, well, I think most devotees, especially the ones that are not brahmacharis, pretty much already dressing like Westerners. It doesn't seem to really help the movement to grow so much. So what is it that would help the movement to grow? Well, this is my thoughts. Let me come over into the garden. looks better than this house. So, this is what I reckon. Well, wow, there's not many branch, not many leaves around here. It must be uh, getting to winter time. I like the green in the background. Yeah, it's a bit better. Ah, oh, much nicer. All right. So, this is what I reckon. In the 70s, you know, those times, there was quite a lot of devotees being made. Yeah. And in those days, devotees were not afraid to wear devotee clothes. But who cares? That's not the point. The point is that the devotees used to focus on two things. One, book distribution, and two, they used to preach to the young people. Back in the 70s, we had the hippies, people that were looking for some alternative um, way of life, looking for something better than just the same old, same old that everybody else is following. We also had a few other things that have come along the way. We had Krishna Kaur, you know, in America, like, Hare Krishna! You know, <clears throat> so it was a, a kind of a music that was the anthem for an angry youth that are looking for some alternative. And then, um, and then you had the rave scene in the UK, you know, where people were taking drugs. It's sort of a different version of the hippie times, way cooler music. But anyway, that's uh, just my personal preferences. And um, the devotees went there and met these people, and they were looking for something better. That's why they're taking drugs. It's like they're not satisfied with what they got now. And so, they take these drugs to try to kind of open their awareness. So when the devotees came and gave them Prabhupada's books, like Ishopanishad and Bhagavad Gita, they're like, wow, yeah, this is, this is, something, this is something good, this is something better. You know, so this is what um, the focus needs to be on. One, distribute the books. Two, preach to the young people, especially people who are looking for something better in life. You know, nowadays there's still such people. You know, there's travellers, really good um, prospects for Christian consciousness. I know here in Auckland that many of the devotees um, 
have become devotees when they were travelling here in New Zealand and they met a book distributor. Books, young people. And then, of course, that's not quite enough. You also have to um, care for people, you know, and that's another feature about the loft is that once the people come to the loft and they, they're very welcoming and they make it easy for people to become part of the community and they cultivate them. So that's also very important. Um, but today I just really wanted to focus on these two things of book distribution and um, looking after young people or you know, trying to focus on young people. I'd like to talk about the cultivation part another time. Um, yeah, why young people? You see, the thing is that we might think, oh, you know, nowadays, um, you know, most of our society is householders. But when it comes to preaching, preaching to householders is very difficult because people have already got jobs, wives, children, social circles. You know, they've got a lot of attachments which are hard to break by that time. Whereas some, if someone's young and single, then there's much more opportunity for them to, um, you know, get off to a fresh start with Krishna consciousness before they become entangled in other things, before they become set in their ways. Now, another factor of this is that, um, you know, we're talking about how we can attract people. Now, these principles apply whether they're Indian or, or um, Western, but particularly Westerners don't have such strong family ties, and therefore they have a good chance that if they're interested in Krishna consciousness, they can actually become brahmacharis. You know, they can become... You know, full-time devotees who are going out preaching um, and really dedicating themselves to learning the lifestyle and making a complete change of life. Whereas in the Indian families, it's it's quite rare for um, someone in the West, especially, to to take up brahmacharya life. Of course, if they do, it's wonderful. Um, but just on a general a general rule of thumb is that um, you know, for a single Westerner to become a brahmacharya, it's a, it's um, a good possibility. And it's a good option for the, the Westerner because they need to learn that culture. Whereas if you're preaching to householders, generally you find that um, Indian families tend to join the movement and single Western people join the movement. That's my observation um, of, of a few decades that I've been hanging around. Uh, there's a few rare exceptions you know, where a Western family will become Christian conscious or where a young Indian will become a brahmachari in the West. But you know, as a general rule of thumb, if we focus on the young people and particularly the local people, that's how we'll be able to increase the number of Western devotees. Um, and it doesn't really matter so much about what we wear. What matters more is about the way that we treat people um, and the way we present things, which, again, I'll talk about that another time. So I just wanted to share this. I've written a little article and put it on my website, so I'll put a link to it in the um, comments below or in the description, whatever it's called, so that you can go and check it out and give me your feedback. You know, it's not a complete uh, description about how we can make more devotees, but I just thought that um, after discussing in a Facebook thread recently with a devotee, Nimai uh, Haidamak, I believe his name is, in the of Hali, um, he made this point that in the old days the focus was on book distribution, and Prabhupada had set things up so that by distributing books, that's how we make money for our society. But as time has gone by, the shift has moved away from book distribution, you know, with a sense that, oh, we don't really need to distribute books because we we're getting enough money from our Indian supporters. So without that kind of alignment of the um, finances and preaching, we take the easy path that, okay, well, we're getting money from the Indians. Oh, we don't really need to go and distribute books. That There's not such a, a need for it, so it kind of slips away. But if we can put our focus back on that, then I think that it can make a really big difference in um, making more of the local people Christian conscious. You know, and um, Vaishya Sikha Prabhu is like the the um, role model these days of the of dedication to book distribution. So if you ever want to get inspired to distribute books or you want to learn the techniques of how to do it, you can go to, um, I think it's called distributebooks.com or uh, what's the other one called? He's got another website. You can Google Vaishya Sikha Das and Vaishya Sikha Prabhu. It'll come up. Ah, oh, I really forget what his other website was called. Anyway, he's a really good person to check out if you want to find out how to distribute books. Um, if you're interested in um, developing a strategy, you know, for how to attract people you know, to your temple, how to do uh, use some of the modern media for marketing to distribute books and to bring people to your center and keep in touch with them and cultivate them, that's something that I can help you with. Um, I've got a lot of experience in uh, internet marketing, 
And a big part of that is not just attracting new people, but also keeping in touch with people and cultivating them and keeping them um, excited about what you're teaching. So if that's something you'd like help with, give me a tinkle, message me on Facebook, whatever. Um, but in the meantime, just go check out the article about, um, that I wrote about how to attract more Western people to Christian consciousness and give me your feedback. Now, I meant to say it at the very beginning of this, um, of this Facebook Live, but if you're going to leave an, um, a message, if you're going to leave a comment, don't just say Hari Bol or Jai Shri Radha Krishna or whatever, <laughs> you know, something like this. Give me some feedback, you know, tell me. Oh, I like that point. The point 